This is a video on the relationship between concentration and time for chemical reactions. We're going to start out by talking about reactions that are very simple. A very simple reaction like this. Substance A reacts to form a product. Now generally, this type of reaction, of course, as you know, that only has one reactant could be could be could be I say a decomposition reaction doesn't have to be could be a different type of reaction but it could be a decomposition reaction we're going to look specifically at simple reactions like this in which one single reactant becomes product in terms of what we call first order reactions in other words the rate is equal to minus the change in the concentration over the change in time. Based upon the rate law, the rate is equal to the rate law constant K times the concentration of A. This is a first order reaction because A is raised to the first power. So the rate is first order in A. And that's why this is a first order reaction. Here we see that the rate can be expressed in two ways. Again, it's minus the change in the concentration of the A over the change in time. And it can also be expressed as being equal to K times the concentration of A. Well, K is equal to the rate divided by A. The rate for a first order reaction is measured like any other reaction as moles per liter every second or molarity per second and A has the units of molarity therefore the unit of K is going to come out to be 1 over S or seconds to the minus 1 and this would be the value of K or I'm sorry not the value of A the units of K for a first order reaction when you only have one single reactant since rate is equal to minus the change in A over delta T and but rate is also equal to K times A then K times A must be equal to negative delta A over delta T where A is the concentration of A at some time T and we'll define something known as A0 as the concentration of A at time T equals 0 now, it turns out, my friends, that if we plot the concentration of A at some time T versus T, we get a curve. We get a function that is exponential. Nobody likes exponential functions. Exponential functions are no fun. They're hard to work with. It would be a lot easier if we can turn this into a straight line, a linear relationship. Well. If we do some mathematics on this equation right here, we can convert it into a linear relationship. Now, we're not going to go into the mathematics. That's fine. We don't need to. It's not important. But if we do some fancy mathematics on this equation right here, we can turn it into a linear function. So, having done those fancy mathematics on this equation, we get the natural log of A, which is again the concentration of A at some time T is equal to the natural log of A0 where A0 represents the concentration of A when T is equal to 0 in other words it's the initial concentration minus K times T if we plot the log of A versus T if the reaction is first order we will get a straight line if the reaction is not first order we won't get a straight line but if we do get a straight line, we know that this reaction is first order. So if we do an experiment in which we measure the concentration of A over time, and we know the value of K, we can take the log of A, plot it versus T, get this straight line. If we get this straight line, we know it's first order. And what if we don't know the value of K? Well, very simple. We take the slope of the line. If we take the slope of the line, we will get the value of negative k. 
So, plot the log of A versus T. If you get a straight line with a negative slope, you know that it's first order and it follows this equation. And we can now find the value of K. Graphical determination of K. Here is an example of the graphical determination of K. Here is a reaction. This is a reaction that is, as you can see, a single reactant reacting to form two products. We notice that if we take a bunch of data, a bunch of data was taken, and if we plot the log of the N2O5 concentration, which is the reactant, and versus the temperature, I'm sorry, not the temperature, the time in seconds, we see that we get a straight line. So that straight line with a negative slope tells us that this is definitely a first order reaction. And that if we take the slope of this line, picking this point right here, and this point right here, and if we take delta y and divide it by delta x, we'll get the value of minus k. So plugging in the numbers, the slope comes out to negative 5.7 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds to the minus 1. And therefore, since m is equal to negative k, k has to be equal to 5.7 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds to the minus 1. First order reactions continued. The half-life, given the symbol T1 half, is the time required for the concentration of a reactant to decrease to half its initial concentration. This is a half-life. The time that it takes for the concentration of the reactant to decrease to half the initial concentration. T1 half is equal to T when the concentration of A is equal to the concentration of A0 divided by 2. In other words, at some time T, at some time T, when the concentration of A, right, A changes with time. So, at some time T, we measure the concentration of A. When concentration of A is half the original concentration, T becomes equal to the half-life. So, this equation here, this equation here is a rearrangement of the previous equation, which I'm going to go back to. One more slide. It is a rearrangement of this equation here when t is equal to one half, or t one half, excuse me, the half-life, when t is equal to t one half, and a here is equal to a zero divided by two. Let's go back again. That equation you just saw, which we're going to go back to, is a rearrangement of this equation when t is t one half, the half-life. And of course, at t one half, the concentration of a is half the initial concentration. So this becomes the natural log of A0 divided by 2. And when we plug that back in and rearrange the equation, it looks like this. So, it turns out, my friends, that since A0 and A0 are going to cancel each other out here, this becomes the natural log of 2. So the half-life for a first-order reaction actually ends up being the natural log of 2 divided by k. The natural log of 2 is equal to 0.693. So the half-life for a first-order reaction, the time that it takes for the concentration of the reactant to decrease to half to its original concentration is just equal to 0 0.693 divided by k. The half-life for this type of reaction is only dependent upon the value of K, not the concentrations for which you start with. So it doesn't matter how much of the initial concentration you have for A, the half-life will be the same regardless. What's the half-life of N2O5 if it decomposes with a rate constant of 5.7 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds to the negative one? So, 
T1 half is the natural log of 2, which is 0 0.693. 0 0.693 divided by the value of K comes out to 1,200 seconds, which, of course, is 20 minutes. That would be the half-life of this particular reaction. So it takes 20 minutes for half of the concentration to disappear. How do you know the decomposition is first order? Well, as we said, one way you can tell is the units of K. K is seconds to the negative 1. Also, as we said before, if we plotted the natural log of A versus T and we got a straight line with a negative slope, that is an indication to us that it is first order. And it is also an indication that we can figure out what the value of K is by just finding the slope. First order reactions. Remember, it's an exponential function. Number of half-lives. After one half-life, A is equal to A0 divided by N. Half-life, 2, A0 divided by N. 3, A0 divided by N. And 4, A0 divided by N. So, those would be the concentrations for at each half-life. Okay, going to end this video right now. I know it tells you in your syllabus to uh, do all of the videos at once, actually, or it says it's one big long video, excuse me. But what I'm going to do is, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it up into first order, second order, and then finally, last but not least, zero order. So I'm going to end this right now, and of course, I'll see you tomorrow in class, and if you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. Bye.